this is gonna be the fourth connect, no? It's crazy. I mean, I did not start streaming um, from the beginning. I started doing VR, so well, I didn't have a PC. So I literally remember the days where I was still editing uh, videos on my phone. Everything done, editing on iMovie and stuff like that. Like, that was some special times. What are we looking forward today? Besides the headset, because this is pretty much a given. I was wondering if we will actually see GTA or not. Because I feel like this is, well, the last chance, no? If not now, then never, pretty much. Like, what's the point of announcing something that big? Not now. <laughs> Even if it's in the slight development phase, like even the screenshot would would uh, satisfy people. But a lot of stuff is finally being announced and released going towards the Christmas that was announced at the showcase. I mean, if they would just say something, <laughs> literally, about GTA, then it, it would be fine. Like people would wait five years for it. I am sure they will uh, push out more stuff with the horizon. I actually start to get into it, like the uh, words. It's fine now, like... The last time I was there was maybe like two years ago or something like that. So... That was rough, but now it's like... They put some money into it, now they introduced this new dev team or whatever that puts out like games every week or so, or even more frequently. So... there And there is like some fun stuff happening there. Comparing to Old Space, which is dead, but uh, it definitely had to pass some time to actually make it like worthwhile experience. What's interesting is that apparently different RAM is gonna be included in different options, because storage is always like based on preference. What was it like? One hundred and twenty-eight, and then five hundred something leak or whatever was that? The base model will have eight gigabytes of RAM, and then the other one will have twelve which is the Pro, like Quest Pro has the same. I mean, my main incentive is always to go with the more performance whenever that's possible. 128 is fine, like comparing to the base one of Quest 2, like this is this is okay, like there's not gonna be a 80 gigabyte of game. There's just a lot of stuff happening, always post-connect. I mean, I remember the times when Quest 2 dropped and bam. Eight games, <laughs> literally at the moment. I think it was the Japanese release or something like that. What? 7.30? Oh my god. Uh, it's a struggle. The question is what I will be doing with the Pro. Controllers stay because it's separate. I wouldn't say Pro will just sit on the shelf though. I mean, you won't necessarily see it in the Horizon series, but Pro is good for the social stuff because of the face tracking and eye tracking. I'm not necessarily talking about foveated rendering like in Light Brigade or other games that will use it. It's kind of like a niche thing and then I don't think it really upgrades the experience that much that I've seen because the performance really goes down so for some reason. Maybe it's about the implementation. I love it though, like, I mean, I wish I would not get it for 2000. For its current price, pre-knowing Quest 3 existed, it was perfectly fine, like this 1000 something. Now, it's gonna be some exclusive uses. I don't think even pass-through is gonna be there better. I still like the headset overall, like uh, it was a good idea, but I feel like that the, the whole problem was that it was released too late. If it would release one year earlier, perfect, but that's not what happened. They showed it, like in the case, on the Connect 2021, I think. It's hard to tell what I'm interested in this headset, because I know I'll be using it regardless, because that's just what is enforced upon me. <laughs> it is gonna be the, uh, better from the Pro, most likely just due to the processor. I feel like I will have to customize it more than the Pro, because with the Pro I didn't really change that much, if at all. But with Quest lineup, the consumer one, you need to modify it with the faceplate, sometimes the back 
thing. I think the third party are already working on it. I mean, I got the offer from one for prescription lenses, so that's gonna come around eventually. I mean, the overall headset looks clean. I don't know why some people had the problems with... <laughs> What's the Pixar movie about the monsters? Monsters Inc? It looks very Monsters Inc. <laughs> the quest designs were always a hit anyways. It's just people like to complain. <laughs> But you have this base trap, which of course you have to change it. Looks relatively small, or the controls look big in comparison. I wonder what's gonna be the distance between the face and the lenses, like this face gasket or whatever is very large. Announced games I'm excited about the ones that are coming out from the top of my head it's Asgarav. But who is not? I feel like Asgaraf will encompass everything that VR was, kind of. Because we'll have the physics, we'll have the better combat with dismemberment, open world, store. It's like it. I think the first one already was amazing for what it was at the time, and now it's gonna be. Well, it should be even better. But it's kind of like that series compiles stuff from multiple games into one. Then we we'll have Assassin's Creed which is gonna be interesting for me to come back to the series if it's gonna be part of the lore or part of the canon because the only game I played was the first one with the... I don't remember the name. It was a very long time ago, it's like a, an old school Assassin's Creed game. Then I played maybe like two hours of the second one with Ezio. And then I dropped it, and I think that was the time when I started working after quarantine. <laughs> it's like I bought PS4 for quarantine, then played a couple games, then I sold it because I'm not gonna use it ever, because PSVR 2 was not coming for that. Nowadays, flat screen gaming is gone. Sometimes I force myself to not play certain stuff, because, well, it's not, first, it's not gonna be the same experience, but second, it's like, it's not reserving myself from better, better like, gaming or whatever. But VR kind of breaks you the other part of the industry. I wonder when that's gonna be for us, when we'll be like very much mainstream. Like, now people seem to think we are, but. Mm, it's not dying, but it's slowed down, definitely, from Quest 2. And I'm not sure if the Quest 3 will repeat its success, because we're definitely in the different times, different price range. It's definitely catering specifically to us now, which is nice. I'm very much looking forward to Resident Evil 4. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'll have an unnatural or natural advantage, uh, because the experience from Quest is still very fresh on my mind and um, I mean I can give you a sneak peek actually uh, at the moment I stopped I mean I have some pre-recorded videos still from Quest 2 it's like I never had like the opportunity to do release it but there's a very specific one, uh, moment when I'm like I'm, I'm out <laughs> and I wonder if that's gonna happen uh, in the remake let me just show you just I watched the hour in the meantime. <laughs> Oof, the frame rate is heavy. Making sure. Don't. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Oh my fucking god. Even... Oh. <laughs> Fucking bullet sponge! Why? He has to have some weak points. Oh fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. 
I feel like he won't die. No. Fuck. <laughs> and that's when I ended. Pretty much, I have two minutes left, and then I'm like, hmm. It's done. <laughs> it's because the old school games have certain ambience around them of horror. Like, it's very jump scary, it's very like you would never expect what's gonna happen because there's no build up. There is just like stuff is happening immediately. Okay, I mean, uh, half an hour later, we're here at last. But like, what's gonna be the dynamic? Because we watched only the pre recorded stuff in my history of live streaming. Sure, they'll have a heavy push for MR. But I think that's gonna be the main selling point of the headset, which maybe? Oh, it's open space, okay. Welcome to Connect! Okay, that's different. The future and how these ideas of the physical and digital come together into this idea that we call the metaverse. Oh, and a lot of the words. foundational technologies to enable this are the things that we are going to talk about today. Mixed reality allows you to bring digital objects into the physical world. Mm -hmm. Advances in AI allow us to create different AIs and personas that can help us accomplish different things. And smart glasses are going to eventually allow us to bring all of this together into a stylish form factor that we can wear all day long. First, we are incredibly proud to introduce Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality headset. Oh, wow, they're so excited. Quest 3 is Who are those people the most powerful headset that we have ever shipped and it allows you to blend the physical and digital worlds together. So when you put on Quest 3, uh, you see the physical room around you. Only now it is a canvas that you can bring your digital Ooh, objects into the world. That seems seamless. You know, Quest 3, it, it, it understands your space so oh wow! Play with the Lego big tails. You. you can solve okay. Lego puzzles. Here we go. The first one. Build your own creations on any flat surface in your room. It's like an adventure you mixed play reality games game. Like Bam with your friends sitting around a table, whether you're physically right there Bam. together, or even if they're far away. I mean, the quality is astounding. But now, if you're doing a body combat Ooh, workout, let me the targets are going to come at you Bam. in your physical room, whether you're in your living room or if you're. That's you're, cool. uh, you know, in your home gym, you're be able to look around and see the room around you, so you're going to be a lot more comfortable you know, swinging your arms and moving your body. The limits of your physical space are going to be able to expand. So you're going to be able to be a Wait, part of much stranger larger Stranger Things is going to be mixed reality? There's one point in the Stranger Things game where you can be sitting in your living room Did or else the portals to the that? upside down open right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, these experiences are possible because Quest 3 shows your physical space with 10 times more pixels than what we had on Quest 2. And it automatically maps the space that you're in using two dedicated color camera sensors oh, and a depth God. sensor. Which makes it so that if you, you know, pick up a digital ball and throw it at the physical wall, it'll bounce off it. Or if someone's shooting at you and you want to duck the fire, you can just get behind your physical couch. This is nice. This is very automatic, very just... Yeah, yeah th this is what we should have Now this also had. means that you're going to be able to take a big virtual screen and just drop it wherever you are and it'll show up in your physical room. And, uh -huh. and this is going to unlock a lot of awesome experiences for hanging out with people, watching content, you know, even if they're not there with you. They're really going for Mr. but I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to share today I'm also interested. is <laughs> that X Cl uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming is coming to Quest in December. So, I mean, you're going to be able to play you know, hundreds of Xbox games, including titles like Halo and Minecraft and Elder Scrolls, Ma and you're going to be able to do that Minecraft? on a massive screen anywhere you go. 
There's two controller, yeah, but... We're just scratching the surface of okay. what's going to be Okay, here's the Microsoft. ...virtual objects into your physical space. And next year, oh, uh, we're okay. launching something that we call Augments. Here we go, Quest Homes. Which are basically persistent, spatially anchored digital objects that you can interact with. So, you know, you can put a frame on your wall with photos and nice. videos that, that's from nice. Facebook and Instagram. So it's like uh, custom you can real digital world. Portal next to your <laughs> physical workout gear. So every time you walk by it, you can easily jump into a supernatural workout. Let's take a look at Ad Asgard's Wrath 2. For the original, you needed a full gaming PC and a headset that was wired to it um, in order to get it to work. And the sequel runs natively on Quest 3, and it looks awesome. Uh-huh. Assassin's Creed Nexus. <laughs> Finally here. Finally here. Worth waiting for. I, I know a lot of us have been waiting for this. This is the actual um, gameplay. It is, it just, like, it you know, with the graphi graphics and stuff. And there are it a bunch of other major developers who are bringing great titles Powering out systems. of the open app lab uh, that, that we have, like Roblox, which is launching today. I'm really excited for this one after taking the time uh, to optimize it I still it need to VR. review this. A lot of awesome new Horizon content coming. Oh, they're really excited for that. Okay. I mean, it's cool. I like how I see some so developers from Hubris Tribe like, in the city sitting so, soon. There it is. I mean, I like how he's saying mixed reality now because before it was like, eh, but now I see it. All right, Quest Three. It is shipping on August tenth. You can order it today for four hundred ninety dollars. August, October, mate. So for me, the base model is fifty euro more. Wait, wait, wait. You know, today Something is going on with the Asgard Two and this headset. It says to get Asgard Two with Quest Three, but is this like a Promotion? Yeah, something like that. I see free Asgaraf. That's huge. Asgaraf 2 is like 50 bucks, if mo not more, right? As a launch title. And if you're into it, like going for it, then this is literally a no brainer. What? Get highly anticipated VR action game. Yeah, so there will be a code for it with model of the base one and the bigger one. This is amazing. It automatically lowers the price of the headset. I mean, in terms of worth, by a large margin, like more than 10% of the headset is the game. Ah, free six months of the subscription with the bigger model. That's nice. It's not tied to your credit card, so... Or maybe you need to activate... It's gonna be wonky with the implementation. But six months, yeah, that's nice. So, we have Quest Free Case, which is exactly the same as the Quest 2. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so the charging dock is here. It is expensive <laughs> wireless. It has rechargeable batteries for your Touch Plus controllers. But, like, are the batteries wireless like this out into a deeper and deeper, uh, can you charge batteries wireless like um, quest to carry case for free yeah that's what's happening essentially <laughs> elite strap 60 bucks elite strap with battery i think this is the standard like prices that were with quest 2 two colors for the facial interface and head strap i mean i because this is the stock one, right? Yeah, this is just the stock one, okay. Um, if you want some colors, it's more than before. I mean, with some personal style. Um, if you want to show, it's colors. There's no function, so I don't think I will see that. But overall, what I'm looking at is... It's because I'm not throwing away my quest to... So I'll probably get case, dock, elite strap for now. Get on a horse. My god, what's happening with this live stream? <laughs> so the RAM is locked, it's 8 all across the board. So lower. The, the chipset holds <laughs> going, going forward. Pixels, that's... 
That's a nice upgrade, even coming from the pro. The FUV is better. Oof, the cameras is a big uh, upgrade. Battery is less. I mean, it's better, of course. Like, hello, like this is no banner. I'm just the visuals will be a bit crazy. Like this here alone, optics is pretty good. FUV is always like personal because it's how close you have lenses to your eyes. These are the first smart glasses that are built in shipping with Meta AI in them. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, starting in the US, you're going to get this state of the art AI of that you can in interact US. with hands free wherever Screw you go. Us. So, you know, let's say you're grilling with your family and you want to know how long you need to be cooking that chicken for. Hmm. You know, or you're playing pickleball and hits the line and you want to know if that's a fault. She disagrees, but you know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> or let's say you just want to settle a debate, you know, some trivia as you're going out through the world. Unusual activity. <laughs> just ask your Meta, Shady your meta, -Band meta glasses and they'll respond and, and, and get you the answer. So we have and, an assistant you know, on board is, this is just with glasses, right? Because this I is guess, just audio, right? it's basically text. Next year, starting next year, um, we're going to be issuing a free software update to the glasses that makes them multimodal. So the glasses are going to be able to understand what you're looking at when you well, ask them questions. The so if you want to know what the I building is, is like the next standing generation. in front of, um, or if you want to translate a sign that's in front of you to know what it's saying. I mean, this is nice. Um, or if you need help fixing this, is like the entry to faucet. AR um, information that you if you look at something, you will see the information. It, but here is kind of like you step step ask for it. it. So, but like, that's, um, you know, I, I think that smart glasses are gonna with be that faucet. You know, he said that how to fix this faucet. Is it scanning actually the environment there? Hey Mera, if I became a race car driver, what would my nickname be? Rocco the Rocket. Not bad. I mean, I overall like the assistant because the information point of view and like just more. In that direction, I think they should go. But it's pretty cool. These Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, we're launching them on October 17th, uh, starting at 2.99. I said it's I'm nuance. really looking Damn. forward to seeing what you all think of them. I mean, are, are those cheaper? Okay. So um, resolution. So this has been a busy year. I wonder if I'll get it actually. Like <laughs> right. now to think those, of it, those are the main things this that I just to this share assistant is uh, very like you know, enticing long, me. But, but, but hopefully worth it. I could care um, for followers over there. And now I'm going to hand it over to our chief technology officer, Boz. Thank you. That was a good talk overall. But the boss is going to be more about what we are looking for. And you're not just seeing a live video feed of the space that you're in. Quest 3 can understand your space and blend it's all about with the virtual MR world. and stuff, so... That begins with understanding where it's safe There are more around. building stuff for That's your right. own environment no rather than creating the custom boundaries. space. So it automatically maps your space and understands elements like walls, furniture, and objects. Once they're mapped, they become a part of your virtual environment too. This makes a lot of new experiences possible. Games can bring your surroundings into their gameplay. So in first encounters, an alien spaceship descends from your ceiling uh. and lands on your coffee table. And next year, you'll be able to customize your space with a library of augments that interact with the world in ways that physical objects can't. That's nice. These can be dynamic 3D objects or 2D displays, and they can all exist together in the same space. You can size, place, and spatially anchor augments, so every time you put on your headset, they're right where you left them. Oh, what the... <laughs> It's just the small things, you know. Augments can blend parts of your favorite VR experiences into the world around you. But essentially, you can real life. trophies on your shelf. Place life-size artifacts from games like Population One or Asgard's Wrath in your living room, or you can bring your favorite artists and stations to life with interactive music players from iHeartRadio. I mean, we're just getting started with what you'll be able to do to enhance your world with augmented reality. 
problem is the space, the you know, because I can like fake my space to even hear about those be able to play minutes. a hero. So I wonder how like a mod don't work here. Hey guys, it's Manuel here, and I'm gonna try the quest tree for your son. Who are those people? <laughs> so Agumen in 2024. Yo, it's Tech Man Ju. Let's hop into quest three. I don't think I'm looking into the cloud gaming though, because that's not necessarily VR to me, like pure VR, if you know what I mean. Let's get it. Engage your warm up mode. Rolling. We are warm and ready to go. This is anything right there. Oh my God. We're showing what we already saw though. Now this is gonna be fun. It's like some celebrities I feel like. Are they showing all the horizons? Because that's not what it is. <laughs> Let's check out some games. Oh. Take a look here at The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. Ah, here we have. You can Sorry. see how Skydance was able to add more detail to the scenes, take advantage I of the frame rates better. I mean, the clarity. The overall resolution of their was textures. it that bad on Quest 2? <laughs> I don't remember. Improved processing power so Shadows. you can choose the features and improvements that your players I mean, will be the most like excited about. Day. Another great example, Asgard's Wrath 2, which we announced at the Meta Game Quest Gaming Showcase. It's an amazing game. Visceral combat, massive, Sorry, Jesus, epic scale environments. But it seems like the processor really that take advantage opens of Quest up improved performance. another As chamber of performance. Coming to Quest 2, Quest Pro, and Quest 3 on December 15th. Okay. And Christmas. we've got a special surprise for Quest 3 buyers. Yeah, we know it. Asgard's Wrath 2 is included free with your purchase. Wait, December 15th? This is Friday. And if you buy the 512 gig model of Quest 3, it comes with a free six month subscription to Quest Plus. That's nice. We're I mean, also we bringing some great new games to Horizon so actually World. Saying... <laughs> I'm really excited about Horizon. Are they all working there? With less Mills body combat, you can turn your home into your virtual gym. Feel the freedom to Not move, hit targets, and dodge walls all for working it up a sweat and having fun with I'll your favorite doing. coaches. Password Lemieux, Quest of 3's course. advanced resolution so natural, makes still not super available. natural. You can hang out with your new roommates, Wallace and Gromit. So I'm just confused about or some of the titles that were supposed to be fully VR, VR but are presented concerts. by MR. And like, is it just a side, VR, side upgrade or, or minigames? I'm now... Not completely sold on the mixed reality, but I see what's up. <laughs> so we'll have Lego. Uh, I'm just something's going on with the mixed reality and the actual games. Like it, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's more of this blending the reality and the real games. Like. Does every game will come with mixed reality feature now? Because that seems very probable from what they presented. Oh, la la, that's a long one. Even though I think I've done longer ones. No, two hours. I mean, half an hour delay. Oof. I like how they sold mixed reality this time around instead of the previous years, honestly. This is more usable and more like it's clear to expect how it's gonna work and how is it gonna be like inside the headset there were n like no new games announcements uh, pretty much showcase gaming showcase is gonna be for the games now connect is for tech that's what's happening quest itself there's gonna be custom like homes with uh, those augmentations uh, this spatial kind of scanning. I think all across the board the headset is gonna be great. Is it gonna dethrone Pro? Was Pro even on the throne in the first place? <laughs> I mean, if I feel like the Pro is gonna be more 
for personal usage really now. This face and eyes tracking thing, which is pretty much the only major differences, is that um, it's it's gonna be good to hang around with friends and just because the the difference between having someone having facial expressions and just like interacting with you is pretty big if, if when you just interact with other people like that's pretty much imp very much important and maybe quest 4 will have that and uh, quest 3 no but then there comes a performance so i feel like quest pro is gonna fall into the quest to place which is now m at my home is quest to retiring officially yeah pretty much wait i'm not gonna use the pro without the controllers but i think the controllers i'll keep damn it <laughs> what now i'll have to see the specific kind of usages and the differences between the stock controllers of the quest 3 and the pro there's gonna be a bit, very big difference in terms of tracking and just like the performance i'll keep the pro if not and like I won't really notice that, then cool. Overall, the keynote was it was okay. I guess our um, focus nowadays is the showcase with the games and stuff. This is all technology, uh, but I'm now more interested in the Ray Bans and uh, mixed reality. I'm just wondering what videos or games I would have to record and see. The difference because there's gonna be a lot of updates in terms of the quality uh, in terms of the mixed reality in terms of just everything i remember when quest 2 launched then um, there was just a lot of stuff happening and i'm pretty sure this is gonna be as well it's gonna now i'm gonna pick and choose what's not like worth to do but what i can do because <laughs> i have limited performance and uh, capabilities nowadays as well especially with growing work and then the family and then just personal life like it's called being an adult essentially now we're gonna slowly go towards the quest 3 then we'll transition to it and then we'll just continue doing the other the usual stuff we'll see each other tomorrow <laughs> like I'm here so